live and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. In the news this week, uh, President Trump ha is being pushed by House Republicans, not that he needs a push, to follow <laughs> through on a license to discriminate religious freedom executive order. They're never giving up. Another trans woman has been murdered in Florida and a gay man in Virginia. A bigoted state senator in Florida is forced to resign. Interesting. And we're going to mourn the deaths of a seminal researcher on LGBT issues and the rare out gay powerhouse in Hollywood. Uh, Xavier Jugoli, uh, the police officer who was killed in the terror attack in Paris, was a gay activist. His surviving partner calls for no hatred. More grim details from the anti-gay pogrom in Chechnya and coverage of a protest at the Russian consulate in New York. And in Iran, 30 men were rounded up and arrested and beaten for being gay. And this is a country that still carries the death penalty for sodomy. And now for something completely different. We will review Cynthia Nixon in The Little Foxes. Oslo about the Israel P PLO conflict, Groundhog Day, the musical, and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It's been a busy time. It's because the Tony season is here. Yeah. And uh, President Trump is not letting the grass grow under his feet. Um, if well, only. They're, they are once again, you know, the right wing wants this executive order on religious freedom to undo gay rights laws all across the country, essentially. Sure. And uh, a lot of other things, too. Yes. And so they're pushing on it. 50 House Republicans <clears throat> signed a letter to him saying, get with the program, get this done. I'm surprised since he's gotten so little done in his first hundred days that he hasn't moved on this. <laughs> well, he does, you know, he painted himself in a corner because he is claiming to be a friend of the LGBT community. And someone in there is smart enough to know that if he signs this, all hell is going to break loose from us, from the left. Uh, and he's trying to thread the needle. What does he care? Well, <laughs> really? <laughs> You what know, does he care every, about every, anything? Every, I mean, come on, come on. When you've appointed, you know, uh, 10 famous anti-gay bigots, basically, yep. to the to top levels of the administration uh, and gotten away with that, mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't care about any of that stuff. No, he doesn't care about any of that stuff. Well, uh, it's an interesting question. I agree with you. Uh, this religious freedom, <clears throat> uh, very broad exemption to discriminate also would allow people to claim a religious exemption for not covering contraception, for not uh, performing abortions, for any number of things sure. that uh, the, the so-called religious uh, want to exempt themselves from. It would, it would end the, uh, help end the separation of church and state, which the Supreme Court heard a case about this past week. Uh, you know, Missouri has this very strong law that says you can't give state funds to religious institutions. We have one in New York, too, but they fudge it all the time. And, uh, the, the, you know, this was just about funding a playground for a, for a church. Uh, but uh, the, the Supreme Court justices seem, most of them seem disposed towards um, allowing this kind of funding. And then again, when you break all this down, uh, you lose something very special about this country, which has kept us going for two over how many, however many years it has been. Well, more and more we have politicians uh, who take elected or appointed office and declare their uh, uh, devotion to installing a theocratic state. And our Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, is just one of the most prominent. He says openly and repeatedly that he wants a divine uh, law uh, ruling the country. Yes. And you hear that a lot from uh, yes. these guys. President Trump uh, said that his favorite book is the Bible. <laughs> you believe well, that? Well, Michelle Bachman has. Uh, I thought it was Mein Kampf. <laughs> and Michelle Bachman well, he did, has well, he did keep a 
book of Hitler's speeches on his bedstand. Yes, he did. And, you know, uh, hung around with Roy Cohn. Uh, Michelle Bachman has surfaced to say, uh, God helped Trump win to stop transgender bathroom use. Well, uh, you know, one of the one of this the, is their religious one of the biggest tr anti-transgender activists in the country, a guy named Mark Green. We know a very nice Mark Green here in New York, but this was a Tennessee legislator, is, uh, as we've told you, up for sec uh, secretary of the army. And he's now bitterly complaining uh, that uh, he is being targeted by the liberal left, making him out to be a hater. Well, you've got quite a record. Uh, but he nevertheless stated, I believe every American has the right to defend their country regardless of, names a whole bunch of categories, including sexual orientation and gender identity. It's, uh, and, and then he says, and religion. It's the radical left that won't allow that. We'll see what happens when his confirmation hearings come, but I'm surprised there hasn't been even more outcry about him. Yeah. Uh, because how is he going to run an army that has been opened up to everybody and uh, have anybody have any faith in him, well, so to speak? Things are going to hell. And then, uh, you know, we, we, we warned you that uh, the right wing is pretty intent on undoing a lot of declaration of national monuments done by the by President Obama. Now, most of that has to do with use of federal lands. They would like to, you know, despoil them, and uh, uh, Obama protected Oil drilling, them. Yeah, all cattle that kind of grazing, stuff. whatever. But the right wing has stated that it wants uh, the designation for the Stonewall National Monument undone. And I don't know how much power a president has to undo something that's been declared a national monument, but uh, that that is something that they are look. They, he is or, uh, Trump has ordered a review of all of these things, and we could we could lose that designation. Well, I'd like to think that his uh, uh, you know public uh, declarations would prevent him from doing that, but it would be. A, I think it'd be I a, would like it would not be to a be pretty, naive. It would be a pretty stupid battle to pick, but it's nothing. I don't put anything past this guy. Well, we're creating. I, look, I'm most worried about World War III. All right. <laughs> Seriously. Well, uh, we have an independent creation of a new national monument that we should uh, show folks before we move on oh, to yes, other political yes, news. Yes. Uh, the Ogilvy and Mather ad agency here in New York, working with the New Fest LGBT Film Festival and New York City Pride, have created a new font in favor, uh, in uh, honor of Gilbert Baker. And it is uh, open use. It is being given free to the world, and it's uh, quite lovely. And you'll see we're running the uh, the video of it, uh, and, and it's, it's named Gilbert. And here it goes, and it's uh, it's, it's all quite based on zippy. the rainbow. And so it's an it's uh, <laughs> it's. Stunning. Well, they say they want it to be used, be able to be used for protest signs and all those kinds of things and banners, just as Gilbert did. Yeah. So um, for those of you who are listening and not watching and seeing this, you can go to typewithpride.com and you can see the whole panoply of, uh, of possibilities with the font. I want to see the colors darker. I don't want them to disappear at a distance. <laughs> I want people to get the message. That's certainly the way Gilbert worked. Those, his messages were short and bold and then on these huge banners. And they always read very well. And we're going to take those banners to Brighton Beach on May 20th for the Brighton Beach Pride. We're going to take his anti-homophobia nice in Russia banners. Into the Russian, yes, into the Russian absolutely. den? absolutely. Well, you know, the I, Russian... I watched, in the Polo, I watched in the Pulaski Day Parade. Yeah. We took them by surprise, but there were some jeers from the sidelines. This was many years ago. I think the... And we were never invited back. Well, it's not that I want to suggest the that group. the Russians in Brighton Beach are uh, not homophobic. That's the point of going out there and doing this. But I'm sure they're anti-Putin. These are these are refugees from Russia. Okay. These are, uh, or at least I hope so. We'll find out. If I'm not here after May 20th, you'll know. But for those of you who'd like to join us on May 20th in Brighton Beach, that is going to be uh, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, Brighton Beach Pride, 5th Street and the Boardwalk in Brighton Beach, okay. Brooklyn.
Do you we'll think, tell you more about that. I will tell you about it ad nauseum as we get closer. Do you think there's much to the story that the Democratic Governors Association might be planning a meeting in North Carolina? I, sure, why not? Well, because... There are only three of them. <laughs> no, no, there are not. There well, are there not. aren't very many. There is only a handful. It's terrible. What, 14, 16, and something governor, like that? our Governor Cuomo just hired a Republican to be his chief of staff. I... I Whatever. All right. Uh, anyway, let's do other political news. Let's start with this guy in Florida. Uh, State Senator Frank Antilles, I assume. Artilles. A-R-T-I-L-E-S, I think okay. it is. Okay, or Artiles. Who knows how his name is pronounced. It doesn't matter anymore. He's gone. <laughs> he's resigned because... Well, uh, do you have his quotes? Yeah, he proposed. He's the he's got, you know he proposed the anti transgender bathroom bill there. But he he met uh, an African American legislator in a bar in Ta Tallahassee, and he started talking about how the state senate president was a pussy. He called two Tallahassee lobbyists faggots and used the N word to refer to six white law lawmakers of his own party. And he called the woman legislator a bitch and a girl. Uh, he was at first forced to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> but, and he defended himself. And he said, I, now I'm going to say this. He says, I didn't say niggers. I said niggas, he said, which is different in my mind. <laughs> but Only under, in your mind. Under pressure, he resigned because he was becoming a distraction to the great Republican onslaught uh, in Florida. He's gone. <laughs> Uh, now, we have our eye on this race in Georgia still, the 6th uh, Congressional District, where John Ossoff almost uh, won yes. uh, outright, but now has to go into this runoff with Karen Handel. Well, she's uh, a horror. She was the woman at the Susan Komen Foundation who tried to defund plan, pa Planned Parenthood, exactly. which got her, ultimately they had to get rid of her because you know, she had this agenda. Well, another one of her agenda planks is gay couples and gay parents are not what God intended. <laughs> so if you needed further uh, impetus to support John Ossoff in Georgia, now, there you this go. This is a wealthy suburb of uh, Atlanta. Yes, right? and it was uh, represented for a long time by Newt Gingrich. <laughs> yes. But it, it went big for Tom Price, uh, the former congressman, now Health and Human but Services only Secretary. only for Trump. Correct. And so that's... And, so I'm, what I'm saying is educated people generally don't like this kind of, you know, Yahooism. Well, uh, Karen Handel is not a Yahoo. She's a very slick and experienced politician, and, and uh, she's going to get a lot of support. But uh, we have to continue pressing for John Ossoff. I just hope Trump campaigns for her. <laughs> The, uh, a little good news, uh, sort of, from Alabama, where the Supreme Court has upheld the permanent suspension of Judge Roy Moore. From the second the, suspension. Yep. Yeah, uh, for his refusal to acknowledge the Supreme Court's legalization of same-sex marriage. But he retains the title of Chief Justice uh, because of a technicality. And? He wants to either run for Senate or Governor. Mm-hmm. So don't count him out yet. We thought he'd been counted out the first time he got suspended, but he came back from that, got he's, himself reelected. No, he, he, you know, he, he can't run again, at least for chief ju for for justice, because he's too old. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of the law, the Mattachine Society in Washington D.C., which was revived as a group by Charles Francis, the yes. uh, gay Republican who was close to George Bush and who has been a great activist uh, in the last few years. So uh, Charles Francis and the Mattachine Society are suing the Justice Department. They've uh, put in a FOIA request for release of documents related to the Lavender Scare, the Eisenhower executive order that uh, mandated firing of LGBT people from government jobs in the 50s and for the next 40 years. Uh, it turns out that uh, not only has Jeff Sessions, Trump's attorney general, uh, refused to turn over any documents. I'm sorry, we don't have anything relevant to that. Uh, but uh, well, Loretta that, Lynch refused yes. to uh, to respond to the FOIA request. They said it would be burdensome. Too much work. Uh, because the word pervert got 5,500 hits. <laughs> pervert. 5,500. Well, you know, That's you know, not that many documents you know, to dig out. If you, if you look up uh, uh, gay in the uh, Times Index from the newspapers of old in the 50s and things, it says, see perversion. 
<laughs> New York Times. Well, thank you to Charles Francis and the Mattachine Society of D.C. Yes. for pursuing this and trying to dig up those documents. And again, I'll parenthetically recommend to you Josh Howard's new film, yes. The Lavender Scare, uh, which is now having screenings around the country. You can look that up on the LavenderScare.com website and find yes. one near you. In Texas, the state has been ordered to pay $600,000 in fees to the lawyers for the same-sex couples who successfully challenged that law. Uh, you know, but the uh, Texas Attorney General, the wicked uh, Ken Paxton, is trying to find a way to get out of this, but he's lost now at the uh, appeals level. A few good notes. In New York, uh, Governor Cuomo, previously mentioned, has uh, instituted a, a non-discrimination policy for sexual orientation for insurance companies uh, coverage of fertility treatments. You cannot discriminate against uh, LGBT people in, provide, in covering fertility treatments now in New York State. And I want to go back to Texas for a second where a seven-year-old named Libby Gonzalez was set to testify against an anti-transgender bill there. And I just want to read what she was going to say. She said, my name is Libby Gonzalez. I'm seven years old and I'm transgender. I love my school and my friends and they love me too. I don't want to be f scared to go to the bathroom or anywhere else in public. And I never, ever want to use the boys' bathroom. It would be gross and weird. Please keep me safe. Mm -hmm. Seven years old. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Bibb City, uh, Bibb County, uh, Georgia, which is Macon, Georgia, uh, commissioners by a vote of six to three have helped Libby, or if she ever goes to work for the county there, because they voted for a non-discrimination law for county employees uh, on the basis of sexual orientation. And one of the commissioners who voted against it said, well, gender well identity. Where's, the, where's the record of, of complaints about discrimination? Well, listen, you idiot, if they don't have a law, you know, then people don't, people complain. don't complain because they have no they're, reason they're to because they're not going to get anything. There's just no need for this. That Nobody's is the complaining. That, and, and what if they didn't? What well, if you, you know, never had a case? In New York, in New York City, where it took us 15 years to pass a, a, a gay and lesbian rights bill, uh, we that we got that from heads yes. of the council. So uh, some of the commissioners on the Human Rights Commission said, "We will take complaints. We can't do anything about them, but we're going to compile all the complaints." And they got hundreds of complaints, and they compiled a book. They and, plopped it on the and, desk, and there it was. And come on. And even if you didn't have complaints, even if you passed the law and that prevented it and you had no complaints, what does it cost you to make a statement of right. non-discrimination? Uh, look, they just don't want to do it, so it's, they, they make an excuse. And they're nonsensical. Uh, well, New, uh, the New Hampshire city uh, of Keene. Keene, where I've been. Because my brother, to, oh, my, well brother then. my brother and sister went to camp there as kids. Uh, in a unanimous vote, added gender identity to their existing city employment non-discrimination law. But in New York State, we keep coming back to this, the, a committee of the state Senate has rejected a gender identity and uh, expression non-discrimination law for the umpteenth year in a row vote of six to three. And this is because uh, the governor has allowed Democrats to caucus with Republicans who are in a minority in the state Senate, but who, are, who have power over the state Senate because Democrats vote to keep them in power. It's because they're an right wing Democrats they're not, who, oh, they're who not, want power. They're not so right wing. They're just kowtowing to the real estate industry, basically. They want they're power. lining their own yeah. pockets. Yeah, it is an outrage. Yeah, an outrage. And we're here. So it's pathetic. Well, and in Alabama, the legislature there has okayed religious exemptions for adoption agencies. This is another, you know, current running through the country. Heaven forbid that some Catholic adoption agency should have to actually serve all comers or give up their uh, public funding to do it their way. No, they want, uh, they want the money and sure. the ability to discriminate. Sure. Well, and the United Methodist Church, which said it was going to lay off on gay stuff for two years while it reviewed everything. Nope, it's scheduled to review seven cases addressing LGBTQ issues within the church, including uh, the election of an openly lesbian bishop, Karen Oliver Olivido. Uh, but uh, thank heavens we have two seventh grade girls in Bethel, Connecticut, who are a little smarter 
they decided that for their social issues uh, class in middle school, they would create the Bethel, Connecticut first Pride Parade. 500 people showed up wow. and had a great time. Wow. Uh, two seventh grade girls. Thank you very much. It's happening everywhere. In Chandler, Arizona. Wait, are we ready to get to that? Uh, not quite. All right, let's save that. Uh, Hillary Clinton uh, is, you know, showing up here and there. She went to the Gay Community Center dinner. Yes, she did. Here LGBTQ in New York. Community Center in New and York. And she said, keep on fighting. Well, whoever writes her stuff knows what the current issues are because she rattles them off like she's been watching the Gay USA show or something. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Uh, hey, you know, right. We'd like to have her in, wouldn't we? Ch talk things over? Sure. 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 And congratulations to uh, longtime activist and theologian, uh, out lesbian Mary Hunt, who is getting a Peter Gomes Memorial Award at Harvard Divinity School. Peter Gomes was the gay professor. Yes. And, uh, out gay. And uh, <laughs> we're not allowed to say that anymore. <laughs> The Associated Press says we can't say out gay, we just have to no, say gay. No, openly gay. They don't want to say openly gay. Oh, openly gay. Well, at any rate. Um, but they're right. You know, we should be beyond that. We should just be able to say. And I don't take orders from the AP. <laughs> yeah, they, they haven't done everything perfectly. No. Uh, but nonetheless, Mary Hunt, who is yep. legendary as an activist, sure, uh, many liberal times. theologian, is uh, getting a nice award from Harvard Divinity School in the name of Peter Gomes. Yeah. Let's, so we talk about uh, some of the people that we've lost, and yes. some of them violently. Yes. Uh, a trans woman named, we have a picture of her, uh, Chavis uh, Reed. Reed, 28 years old, fatally shot in Miami-Dade County early Friday morning. She was at least the ninth transgender woman killed nationwide this year. Uh, uh, all were trans women of color. Uh, eight out of the nine were killed with guns. Uh, she grew up in Carroll City, graduated from American Senior High School, moved into Opelaka when she finished uh, at the Job Corps. Friends say she was like a mother to them. And that she was hilarious and joyful, and they just adored her. Uh, you know, couldn't stop uh, dancing at the Job Corps, had uh, everybody adored her, and this is just a, a shocking loss. Uh, also, uh, Bruce Garnett, uh, a gay man, 67 years old, activist in Virginia, one of the early, one of the first to lobby uh, for gay rights in the Virginia legislature, found dead at home, uh, stabbed to death, 67 years old, had evidently been uh, lying dead there for weeks, weeks before someone said, hey, you know, what's happened to him? He's disappeared. Right. Terrible story. Awful. Uh, and a weird story uh, out of Massachusetts, um, Aaron Hernandez, the Patriots player who uh, killed himself in prison, uh, they're now saying that one of the reasons may have been that he was covering up his bisexuality, that he had a boyfriend in high school, that he had a boyfriend in prison. He left three notes, one to his girlfriend, one to his child, and one to the prison boyfriend. And so they're wondering, you know, they're examining his brain for uh, concussion syndrome, but they're... Uh, Which is highly likely. Yes, and can cause all sorts of paranoia and suicidal thoughts. Sure. Uh, uh, that's happened with a number of uh, football players who have killed themselves. And uh, But this boyfriend story is now coming out, too, about... Uh, uh, and that's from Newsweek uh, telling that story. Uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Judy Bradford, uh, age 73, was a... Uh, very uh, famous and beloved researcher. Really uh, a it, pioneer in the yeah. field of, of, of counting us. Yeah. And uh, was, uh, you, know, you know, she used to say, if you're not counted, you don't count. And uh, she, she worked with the Fenway Health Clinic in Boston. She was on an uh, Institute of Medicine panel on lesbians. She'd been doing this for 30 years and very well known as someone uh, tremendously important in creating the whole idea of data collection on the LGBT community. She is survived by her wife, Nanette Dumas, and her daughter, uh, and uh, who was uh, Frances Bradford. 
And then manager to the stars, Sandy Gallen, uh, dead at 76 of cancer. Well, he was really one of the rare people in the power structure of Hollywood, like David Geffen, who was out. Uh, can I say that? Yes. Uh, and uh, he, well, look, he, he was talent manager for Richard Pryor, Dolly Parton, Cher, Whoopi Goldberg, Joan Rivers, Michael Jackson, and Mariah Carey, among others. Yeah. And he also produced the documentary Common Thread, Stories from the Quilt, was featured on the cover of Out Magazine's Power Issue, and his friend Jessica Parker said his death is a terrible Sarah loss. Sarah Jessica Sa Parker. Did I, whether, I'm sorry. Sarah Jessica Parker said his death is a terrible loss in the joy department. Mm. Very, very uh, Lived with Dolly Parton for a while yeah, in uh, New the, York. They shared a department. Yes. It didn't get her to come out, but uh, there he was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but newly well, out. Well, now she's out. <laughs> Oh, I've said that so many times on this show. Uh, newly out in uh, Arizona, Chandler, Arizona, is the former pastor of a Seventh-day Adventist church, Alicia Johnston, who has come out as bisexual uh, and resigned her post because the church is not going to want to have anything to do with her. Although there's been some, there's been some movement by the church. A little, you know, a little, a the little Seventh bit. Seventh Day Adventist a Church. A little bit of people okay. ra raising issues. Well, um, she do made we, do a little we, video yeah. uh, talking about uh, what's up with her. So let's take a look at that. All right, my name is Alicia, Alicia Johnston, and. Um, I have been a pastor in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and uh, that is past tense now because just this last week I sent a letter to my church and um, to the conference that got forwarded to all the members telling them, number one, that um, through study and prayer, I've come to a point of complete disagreement with the Adventist Church on their teachings about LGBT people. Um, and I don't know how to minister anymore without being honest about that. And uh, number two, that I also myself am bisexual. So I've come to an awareness of that and um, have realized I just can't live my life with integrity anymore without being honest about that. And I can't live my life the way I know it needs to be lived, do the things I know I need to do without being honest about that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's wonderful <laughs> to finally be able to say this is who I am. And um, I, this is something I love about myself. Uh, and uh, I don't have to hide it anymore. <laughs> Well, Congratulations. It is a, an extremely right-wing church. There was a one-hour television show on, this, on the Adventist channel decrying what she did yeah. and saying, you know, hey, what about if somebody comes to her for counseling? Is she going to tell them this gay stuff is okay? And they were very alarmed by it. Well, but, they, know, and they blame the whole thing on the ordination of women. Yes, they do. This is what happens when you let women be ordained, and that's against God and against now, the Bible, and no one should be ordaining women, let alone, you her know. Her previous job was with the Carolina Conference as a church-planting pastor. That mm -hmm. means going into public schools and taking over public space for churches, mm -hmm. which is something I'm, they're doing this in New York. I'm not very fond of it. All right. Absolutely not. All right. Uh, international news? I think we should. Well, let's start in France. Uh, you saw the bad uh, terror attack in Paris last week. Uh, one police officer killed, uh, several other people wounded on the Champs-Élysées. Well, it turns out that the police officer who was killed was a, not only gay, but a gay activist. Yes. Uh, Xavier Jujeli. Yeah. Uh, Jugelet? Okay. yeah. Okay. And uh, he, he participated in the protests against Russia during the Sochi Games over their anti-LGBT mm -hmm. laws. He had been on the scene in the 2015 terror attack at, at the Bataclan and uh, came back for the Sting concert that reopened it. He was in a civil partnership, and there's his partner, uh, who is Etienne Cardil, who spoke so movingly at this service with the police and President Hollande and Marine Le Pen, who wants to divide the country over things like this, and uh, Macron, who's the other candidate, Macron. Macron, in the presidential race. 
So everybody showed up. Clearly, this was uh, a mandatory appearance for all the top politicians. So his his partner uh, spoke and said, uh, "I have no hatred, uh, 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 Xavier, uh, because it is not like you, and does not fit with what made your heart beat, nor what made you a guardian of the peace." It was a very peaceful, you know. Uh, loving, saying, don't let this divide this country, basically. He had also gone to Greece to help the Syrian migrants who were uh, coming in there. Just a terrific Clearly just a, a, a big-hearted guy and a terrible story. Horrible. Also, the continuing terrible story is from Russia, from Chechnya, uh, where the uh, tales of the gay men being entrapped, arrested, tortured, killed, just continue to grow and spread across the world. Well, we have first-person stories from witnesses. You know, uh, you know, they're they're pulled. These gay men are they find them through apps or whatever, or, or somebody turns them in, or maybe a neighbor just says they're gay. So then they pull you and they say, "Who else do you know?" Mm -hmm. And then they zap you with current. He said, "This guy uh, Maxim said it was unbearably painful. Painful. I was hanging on with my last strength. I didn't tell them anything because all they want you to do is name more names. Yep. They're going to bring more." people in and there have been fatalities and some of the fatalities are, are, are due to the fact that they, 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 they these guys get out or they release them and their families commit honor killings against them that's how bad it is I mean I, I've seen you know films on the culture in Chechnya these days and it is Sharia law it is uh, and in fact we have a picture of uh, Putin I think with the president uh, with the guy who's Ramzan, running che uh, Chechnya both of them are denying any of this is happening or that there are any gay people in Chechnya or, you know, any of it. They're just, and, and they get away with just saying that. And the world is complaining but not sanctioning Russia for this or doing anything concrete about it. It's nice that Nikki Haley, our UN ambassador, has spoken up quite strongly. And even the State Department under Rex Tillerson has uh, made some you know, lip service well, to it. We're, we're going to show you something from the protest in New York, which explains it a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, we have a video from uh, there. There is a group in New York called Rusa LGBT, and that is uh, Russian LGBT people who have emigrated from Russia uh, to New York. We've worked with them over the years on uh, Russian homophobia, particularly around the Sochi Olympics three years ago. So uh, you're, we're going to show you a little speech by Yelena Goldsman. They went to the Russian consulate on the Upper East Side of uh, Manhattan. To hold a protest and there are a lot of signs and stuff. So let's start by uh, showing you what Yelena had to say. To say thank you, thank you, thank you everyone who came today. The weather did not cooperate but we still did what we had to do and uh, I, j I just read a Russian LGBT network that is actually in charge of helping people get out of the country. So this is the only uh, Russian organization, LGBT organization in Russia that is capable and actually doing evacuation of uh, LGBT people from Chechnya. These people, we were, we were very concerned about this demonstration because we don't want to do harm. We want to help, but we don't want to do harm. And they just put out uh, a statement that international pressure is what they're looking for. Th this is what we're doing right here, right now. So you guys all contributed. You contributed in a way that is better than money. That's the pressure to our government to press their government to, to help those people. Thank you very much for being here. Go ahead, and those of us who brought flowers, go ahead and, and put that those flowers in front of the embassy. It's in front of the Russian consulate. So we want to lay the flowers for the three murdered people in Chechnya and for everyone who suffered torture and violence. Um, so everyone who brought flowers, please um, lay them in front of the um, in front of the consulate. And we also want to put just a few signs. I'll, I'll take them. Thank you. Thank you. And so they did uh, uh, then proceed to lay flowers and signs in front of the Russian consulate there. Uh, on no one ever comes out to talk to us from the Russian consulate. <laughs> well, occasionally, we've been up there many times dumping vodka in the gutters and uh, chanting and carrying the rainbow uh, banners that Gilbert used to make. 
Uh, so we'll run some of this as we talk to you a little more. Well, about this. I mean, uh, uh, they mentioned, you know, trying to get people out. I mean, really evacuating people, getting people out is like the only thing that's going to help at this point. And there's also a Toronto based group called Rainbow Railroad that is working to, uh, you know, work with on the ground context to try to get people out of there. Um, it's just, uh, you know, it's a completely horrendous situation. Now, since its founding in 2006, Rainbow Railroad has heard from more than 300 LGBT people around the world for, you know, these kinds of things. And uh, they've uh, received 600 more requests for assistance. So, but, um, you know, it's, uh, there are so many countries that have laws. We're going to talk more about them with Iran, uh, you know, that have these laws where basically it's a death penalty if you're found out as gay. There have been other demonstrations around the country and around the world, uh, but there needs to be much more about something like this. Let's do something. Okay. Okay. All right. Enough of that. Uh, and let's go to Iran. No. no? Uh, we have one stay? more on this. Oh, yes, we do. I forgot about him <laughs> because who can, who, you know, who wouldn't? Who would have thought? Marco Rubio, who was uh, basically, uh, you know, someone who was opposed to gay rights, uh, spoke out on the floor of the Senate about this, and here is what he had to say. I highlight the horrific reports on the pro-Russian Chechen government's brutal campaign against LGBT people and others over the last several weeks. Human Rights Watch recently reported, quote, law enforcement and security agency officials under the control of the ruthless head of the Chechen Republic, Ramzan Kadyrov, have rounded up dozens of men on suspicion of being gay, torturing and humiliating the victims, end quote. There are reports that at least 100 men have been arrested. At least three men have reportedly been killed since the campaign began. Chechen LGBT individuals, as well as those just suspected of being gay, have been taken to unofficial secret detention facilities where they have endured heinous abuses. They also, by the way, face the danger of so-called honor killings committed by their own relatives. It's instructive in that vein, a statement from the spokesman for the Chechen leader. Here's what he told the Russian news agency Interfax, quote, if such people existed in Chechnya, talking about gay men in particular and the LGBT community, this is his quote, if such people existed in Chechnya, law enforcement would not have to worry about them as their own relatives would have sent them to where they could never return." End quote. Unfortunately, this is not a new reality for those living under the brutal tyranny of the Chechen leader, who, by the way, happens to be a loyal ally of Vladimir Putin. There have been reports in the past of similar abuses, although the reports seem to be, the, although these reports seem to be the most brutal and should provoke anger in all of us. We should never, ever tolerate human rights violations against any person for their political views, their religious beliefs, their sexual orientation. According to reports today, the Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov said that Russian officials have not seen information to confirm the reports. Well, wow. It's uh, nice to see Marco Rubio being fluent in these issues. Yes, except that he won't sponsor the Equality Act, which would protect LGBT rights in the United States. Yeah. and. Uh, he's likely to vote for all, he's going to vote for all these religious freedom things, which is going to take our rights away. So, I mean, have a heart. Charity begins at home. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, as you say, in Iran, uh, another horrifying report from there. Uh, well, the, in yeah, es Estefan, Esfahan, uh, yes. Iran, cops raided a private party, arrested 30 men as between, homosexual. Between the ages of 16 and 30. Beat Phys them, yeah. imprisoned them, gave them anal exams, at, made them name others. Uh, and if any of these guys are fully prosecuted, they could uh, face extensive lashings or even the death sentence. And watch out, non-gay people, because apparently several heterosexuals were rounded up in this uh, sweep. Uh, it's just uh, horrendous. And it's not just the authorities around the world. In London, 15 men attacked and beat up five lesbians who were coming out of a pub, the Blue Anchor pub. They were happy, they were singing, and these guys just brutalized them. They Fractured a woman's jaw, knocked 
all of her top teeth out, uh, seven teeth with one blow. Stomped uh, on the head of another one and stopped only when the cops came. Well, they did arrest uh, uh, three men, 25, 26, and 27, on suspicion of assault <laughs> and occasioning bodily harm. And, and another man was arrested for suspicion of affray, which I had to look up because it means uh, it's fighting a in a public place. Affray, I think. Affray, whatever yeah. it is. I never heard of it. <laughs> but you that's know? four out of 15. Yeah. Uh, well, and in Nigeria, uh, cops arrested 53 people at what they described as a same-sex wedding. They arrested them for conspiracy, unlawful assembly, belonging to a gang of unlawful society. Northern city of Zaria. Uh, they you were know, granted I, bail, uh, but, uh, and they pleaded not guilty, but uh, their, their hearing is set for May 8th. I had brunch Sunday with a couple of friends, a, a lesbian couple, who are living here in New York uh, for the last couple of years. They moved up from Atlanta. And you would think they could have a perfectly nice life in Atlanta. And I asked them whether they were going back to Atlanta, and they both paused. And they said, you know, it, it's going to be hard for us to go back to Atlanta because Life is so different there from here. Here, it really feels free. And there, uh, there are very few places in Atlanta even where we can be open oh, on the street or very, hold hands. That's a very or, big game. Yeah, holding hands. I mean, it's a, you know, uh, I mean, yes, you can do that in the streets of New York. You can also get the crap beat out of you yes. in New York or murdered yes. if you're gay. Yes. Uh, we, we have a lot of anti gay Not violence the, to report but here. I'm just trying to make the point that yeah. there are, as we go through these international stories, that in fact, while we have come a long way, we still, as always, have a long way to go. Well, absolutely. Uh, and <laughs> some of that is here. Uh, in Mexico, there are some gay soccer players who were trying to come here for the uh, World Out Games, which is... Uh, in Florida on May 26th. Yeah, in Miami. And they were rejected for visas by the Trump administration. Uh, they're fighting it, uh, but, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big blow to their metal hopes. In South Korea, there is a lot of stuff going on about uh, gay people. First of all, the top candidate for president, now that they've gotten rid of the corrupt former president, uh, says he is opposed to homosexuality, but he doesn't believe in discrimination. No marriage, no <laughs> service in the military, but, you know, no discrimination against gay people. Well, a dozen people showed up to protest him, waved a rainbow flag in his face, and got arrested. Well, it is a crime for Korean soldiers to engage in consensual homosexual acts. It is not for people outside the army, apparently. And the, the army is using gay dating apps to find and arrest uh, gay soldiers. Root them out. Yeah. Can we, you know, this has been a very depressing news show. Uh, can we a lot them, of bad can news. Can we give them a little good news? Yes, from the Marianas Islands. Okay. <laughs> where Chinese tourists are showing up in bulk to have same-sex weddings. How nice. Because the Mariana Islands Not are the, the westernmost <laughs> U.S. territory, and they can go there and get married. That's good. <laughs> and uh, back to North America, where uh, Sean Barber, uh, uh, the pole vault world champion in 2015, we have a picture of him in action, uh, and a Canadian Olympian came out as gay, uh, on Facebook, uh, I continue to grow as a person. My parents are my greatest support. Uh, thank you, all my friends. He currently ranks sixth in the world, and you'll be you'll be even you'll go to greater heights <laughs> now that you're out, so to speak. Uh, the Czech Republic, there's a new campaign for same-sex marriage. They legalized civil partnerships some years ago, but there's a new push for marriages, and. Uh, Good news out of North Korea, kind of, out oh, right. of North Korea, oh, right, right. because uh, there's a gay defector from North Korea who has showed up in South Korea, I guess. And uh, he'd probably be very happy to be able to live in Atlanta. He, he was <laughs> interviewed by CNN. Go on CNN's site and look up the North Korean gay defector. He 
he has a very eloquent story about how he knew he was different, but he didn't know what it was, and he got married to a woman, and he felt bad for her, and and finally he figured out what was going on, and he uh, got out of North Korea. Uh, you're getting out just in time. <laughs> I don't know. The, the bombs are going out of North Korea. Who knows what we'll do to that country? That's, uh, well, we... Let, give peace a chance, please. Okay, All right, AIDS please. news. You know, we used to make a big deal about whoever the hell the Surgeon General was in the United States, especially because of the AIDS crisis. Uh, but uh, last week, the Trump administration asked uh, Vice Admiral Vivek Mur Murthy uh, to resign, and they put in a uh, nurse in his place. Uh, Sylvia Trent Adams. She's the acting surgeon. Well, she didn't, they didn't actually appoint somebody. They don't really believe in medicine, science, all those kinds of things. A uh, fascinating story out of Illinois. We have talked for a long time about the uh, bad effects of criminalizing people with HIV uh, and prosecuting them for having uh, sex and not revealing their HIV status, even if they're using protection, even if they're on drugs that make their virus undetectable and therefore not transmissible, or if they're uh, whatever. It uh, doesn't matter, they get prosecuted. Well, in Illinois, prosecutors dropped charges against an HIV positive man, Jimmy Amitavi, uh, he, they said he didn't reveal he was HIV positive and therefore they were prosecuting him, but they, uh, and didn't uh, uh, use a condom before having sex with three women. Well, Jimmy is on medication and is undetectable and therefore not transmissible. And here's what happened. His lawyer said, I'm tired and angered that I must continue to defend people who are publicly prosecuted for merely having a manageable disease. You simply cannot have the intention to transmit a disease when that disease cannot be transmitted. Right. And what he did was he met with the prosecutors and got them to sit down with doctors at a local hospital and learn about the details of having HIV and what the reality is with people who are on medication that makes their virus undetectable. And the prosecutors listened. When do we hear prosecutors listening in any kind of case well, like it, this? It, apparently, uh, we need a training at the Museum of Natural History in New York. Well, I just want to congratulate this yes. lawyer who was sure. so dedicated to his client and and the prosecutors who listen and drop the charges. That well, is amazing. Well, you, you know, this, uh, I mean, I don't want to, we, we're running out of time, but I mean, there was that story. There was that story in the New Yorker about how, why, you know, over incarceration in the United States, some people think it's due to drug laws it's due to racism, which is a lot of racism, all that kind of stuff. But the main thing it's due to is uh, the enormous jump in number of prosecutors in the United States. These offices have gotten so many people, they need something to do. And that's why we have so many, that's the reason we have so many people in jail, because when you had fewer prosecutors, you had to make deals, you cut things, you gave people probation, all that kind of stuff. Not now. Mm -hmm. All right. So, to the Museum of Natural History in New York, where uh, a guy named Brian Torres has filed a federal lawsuit because when, uh, about a hostile work environment, he has HIV, and uh, his uh, a supervisor basically said, you are a threat to my family. I can't have you around. And so... So uh, this, the supervisor harassed him yes. for, you know, everything was fine until the supervisor found out he had HIV. This and, isn't a scientific institution. Yes. So not only did he yell at him all the time and, and say things like this to him, but then he accused uh, Brian of screwing up at work. Uh, it, specifically in one case where he said, uh, you know, you booked my travel to Syracuse when I was going to Rochester. And Brian said, oh my God, did I do that? And, and he looked into the records and the airline produces emails with the supervisor saying, change my travel from Rochester to, from Syracuse to Rochester or whatever. Uh, he had set the whole thing up to frame Brian. Uh, Mr. Montes, uh, I I think you better back up on this, and I think maybe you're the one who needs to be uh, dismissed. Unbelievable. All right, and then in the Easter Bonnet competition of our friends at Broadway Cares, they raised a record $6.4 million, and guess which Broadway show raised the most money for Broadway Cares? It was Sunset Boulevard. 
uh, starring Glenn Close over there. They raised a half a million dollars on their own. Congratulations and thank you. And yes. thank you to Broadway Cares, which continues to do incredibly important work uh, helping people with HIV. It's, gr it's great that people have not let, you know, are, are not forgetting this cause. And of course, they support many other health causes. Absolutely. Uh, women's health, et cetera. Um, but, you know, it's great. Yeah. Well, speaking of Broadway, should we go to entertainment news? Sure, we saw some shows together, or at least parts of them. <laughs> I walked out of one. Well, yeah, <laughs> so I was really looking forward to Oslo, and uh, you know, when you left at the beginning, at the end of the first act, I, I didn't uh, resent you. I mean, this was a play that... You turned to me and said, this is awfully cartoony. Yeah, uh, you know, it was not working, and it was a three-hour play, but I stuck with it, and you missed, you missed a lot of lively characters who came on in the second act. <laughs> and it really, and then ultimately I found it uh, quite moving. I just think it needs to be a lot shorter. Um, but it's about, the, but it's about the Palestinian PLO conflict, about a back channel negotiation that took place in Oslo uh, in 1993, where they actually reached an agreement. Uh, but well, what's happened since? I knew how it was going to turn out. <laughs> <laughs> but... What I did not walk out of was the Little Foxes. You stayed through two intermissions for the I Little did. Foxes. Now, this Three is acts. this is Lillian Hellman's play. It takes place in 1900. It was written, I don't know, in the what, the 40s or something, yeah. uh, 30s. Uh, anyway, uh, it's a Southern Gothic drama. But the but the key here is that uh, either Cynthia Nixon plays Regina or. Uh, um, Laura Linney plays and they switch roles the other role is Bertie which is a smaller role yes. and we saw Cynthia Nixon as Regina who was uh, quite uh, chilling yeah but Laura Linney really stole the show she was terrific <laughs> okay. didn't you think I wonder about stole the show I mean well, for uh, me. you know it's it's a let's just put it this way it is a good production of a little the little foxes if you like your little foxes I, it, and, you know, it's, it's, and it's been extended it's a very old-fashioned play yes. and I uh, once had a nightmare where I was screaming at Lillian Hellman for writing the children's <laughs> hour and putting such a horrible negative portrait of lesbians on the stage and the screen although the original was not so lesbian yeah um, but, uh, but this is a good old fashioned melodrama and the, the plot carries oh, you I along. Wouldn't even, I wouldn't even call it melodramatic. I mean, it, you know, it's, I, I well, thought it, it had you know, a plot. It, it's a dark, dark yeah, tale. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but I also went home and tried to find the Betty Davis movie, yeah. but since I don't have uh, Netflix, I, I couldn't find it. I, and I was trying, I, I'm still trying to remember if anybody did, went to this with me, let me know. But I think I saw Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, doing yeah. the little foxes decades ago here with Richard uh, Burton, right? Uh, Plus, maybe not. I'm not so sure. Well, look it up. You can look it up. Ask Siri. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she uh, did Private Lives with uh, Richard Burton. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, anyway, I saw uh, Groundhog Day the musical. Now, mm -hmm. uh, Andy Carl, who is at the center of this, does a you know does a wonderful job, uh, but uh, I. I have to say, going to see Groundhog Day the musical is like Groundhog Day, because every Broadway score, no matter who writes it, seems to be the same. Un they're just forgettable songs, you know, ballads. You know, there's some inventive staging and things. Look, I think Groundhog Day is a wonderful movie. Uh, you know, if, 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 I, you know, I think I, The Little Foxes is a wonderful movie. And I think, and, and I also think they kind of unnecessarily, with Groundhog Day, vulgarized it a bit, you mm. know, by adding curse words and talk of masturbation and things like this. That, you know, it, kids are, are the main ones who are going to like this, I think. Uh, and certainly that's who Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is aimed at. One of my favorite books of all time. Now, this stars Christian Borle. You'll remember him from Smash there playing Willy Wonka. And it's all about, you know, mostly evil kids who get their comeuppance. Uh, it's a very dark tale, uh, but again, it's that, it's, that same, it's that same, it's that same, it's that same, samey Broadway score. Uh, that, Read the book. Yeah. Read the book. I, everybody said they love the book. It's fantastic. Uh, update on Survivor. Yes. <laughs> with the, with the uh, transgender. Uh, Contestant. Uh, yeah. Yes. Well. He's alive and well. Zeke. Yes. A as of last week, he's alive and well. I have to go home tonight and see whether he gets kicked off tonight. 
uh, but he survived the aftermath, and everybody's very proud of him, and he's very happy to be out, and uh, you know, all See? is right in the trans world of Survivor. And the group that went through that with him says we are now stronger together because we have gone through this. Sorry to read this but week. But now of, he's a target, actually. Sorry to read this week of the passing of Jonathan Demme, a yeah. wonderful director. Uh, you know, controversial at one time for the Oscar that he won for uh, uh, Silence of the Lambs because it basically had a transgender killer in that. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to, we protested that. But of course, he also made Philadelphia with uh, Tom Hanks uh, about about a guy suing when he was discriminated against because of having AIDS. And, and directed a segment of the Red Hot and Blue uh, special TV special, which was uh, an HIV/AIDS uh, fundraiser, and, and he, he was 73. He always seemed like a very humane type of uh, character. And he made some quirky movies that I really liked: sure. uh, Married to the Mob with Michelle Pfeiffer, Melvin and Howard, yes. fantastic movie, and Rachel Getting Married, which I yes. liked very much. Yes. Uh, so yeah, too bad. Sorry to lose him. Uh, and congratulations to Shannon Purser, a young star of Stranger Things and Riverdale, who has come out as bisexual. Uh, she apologizes to fans who were complaining that the Betty and Veronica kiss at the beginning of Riverdale, at the beginning of the series, was just a tease. They never played that out. So she's saying, uh, yeah, I'm bi, and uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry they never explored that. Congratulations to our friend Art Leonard, the, who's a frequent guest on this program, uh, a, a, a law professor. He's been made the Robert F. Wagner chair there at New York Law School. And congratulations to several members of our communities who were included on the Time Magazine 100 Most Influential, I guess, Americans. Gavin Grimm, the uh, trans uh, guy in Student. Virginia. Young, uh, young guy. Uh, fighting for his uh, rights uh, his case in was, high school. was not heard by the Supreme Court. Uh, Sarah Paulson, who has been so celebrated for her portrayal of Marsha... Clark in the OJ uh, story and, and other things she's done. She's terrific. And RuPaul, also on the uh, Time magazine. We're list. taking over. <laughs> well, the Chechens can't stop us. Yeah, well, they're trying, and people are They certainly are. Still are. Trying it's horrendous. All over the world. It is horrendous. So much to do. Yes. Well, and if you would like to be on our email list to get one email a week. Once a week. From Andy, uh, telling you what's on the show, sort of reminding you that the show's on every week, and, and giving you a link to watch it online. You don't have to wait till it comes on TV. With and, special benefits inside. Yes. Of other, links to other, other things. Links, uh, just write to... Gay, uh, Gay US, just go to GayUSATV.org. GayUSATV.org. It's an automatic system. You click on it. You, uh, you can find the show there. You can sign up for the email list. And then they'll send you an email saying, did you really want to do this? And then you have to say yes. <laughs> Otherwise, you won't get the email. You can also find the audio podcast version there, too. Yes. And you can find us here next week at Gay USA. If there's not a war. Yeah.